Well, good morning and a very warm welcome back to the channel. Today I should be fitting the Inov K3 dual camera system to my BMW R1250 GS Adventure. And if you want to see that fitting, as I'm going to split this video into two, then you might want to take a look up here. That's the actual fitting video for it. And if you want to see the unboxing of it and a little chat about the new features of this K3 over the K2, then you want to watch this video. Okay, so here we are then with the unboxing. As you can see, um, quality box, and generally it follows that quality is quality. I purchased my first K2, and I've been very happy with the quality, although quite a few features in this particular new device, which we'll go through both in the unboxing and while we're working on the bike, you will see quite a few features have actually changed and been improved since my original one. So let's take the box off. Uh, it's got a card in there from inov.co.uk with their support number and everything else. The one thing I would say, can't talk globally, but certainly from a United Kingdom perspective, uh, the team at Inov UK have been very, very good. Um, and then inside we've got all of the components separated off in this little foam block. So if we just push all of these out, I think just I should mention to you, this is a pre-shipment sample. Um, this is now in March and it doesn't go on sale until April. So this isn't packed exactly as it should be um, and bringing it freshly out the box but I'm sure you'll get the gist of it. Obviously we've got the two cameras front and rear identical cameras there's no difference between either of the cameras apart from I think one of them may have a slightly different length of cable but we'll go into that in the fitting video. Um, the actual DVR itself is smaller than the old one I, I certainly recognize from here um, which is good because it has a very small space to fit in on the BMW. The other thing I do notice is the original unit had plug-in sockets which had little thumb screws to hold them in. This looks now like it's actually hardwired in and we'll go through that once we get it out of the box. Here's the GPS which looks identical to me and then the new product, one of the two new products uh, in the K3 is this handlebar mounted control switch and I think that's a really good additional feature. Often you're not sure whether you're recording, you're certainly not sure if your GPS is actually working and therefore you've got to take your seat off in my case to look at the DVR to see the signal units actually on the DVR itself. So it's nice to be able to see it up front and you can see that the camera recording is actually working by the camera symbol here, whether the GPS is working by the light behind the GPS thing here and whether the Wi-Fi is working to enable you to transfer stuff between the uh, DVR unit and the app, the Inov app, and we'll go through that a little bit later. Also importantly with this, you've got a button here, um, and that button was on the DVR before, and that allows you to actually lock files. So if you press that, rather than the loop record recording that happens, so a maximum 256 uh, gigabyte micro SD card for this particular unit, but if you fill whatever card you've got in there up, it just goes back to the beginning and starts recording again, because of course you wouldn't want it to get to the end and stop. What this actually does is locks the files. So if you get a particularly good file that you want to keep, if you just press that, that file will be locked and will not be recorded over when it comes to loop. So let's get a bit deeper in the box and have a look at it. Um, all of these units come, come out like so. Got some padding in them, we'll take that out too. So let's look at the DVR first. So here is the uh, DVR unit itself. Just show that to the camera there. But as you can see with this one, it is actually got the wires are actually fixed to it. And they're also color coded. So this side, they're all black actually. But importantly, and let's see if I can show you this to the camera, you'll see that the two camera connectors are actually male connectors. So they have the thread on here, whereas the 
other one here, which I think will probably end up being the GPS unit, but we'll confirm that later, is actually a female connector. It's quite a bit smaller as well, so you couldn't get it confused. But you could get these ends confused if you weren't careful. But once again, we've got red, which I think is probably going to end up being for the microphone, but that one is a female connector. Then we've got these two orange ones, one of which of those will be for the power supply, and I suspect that the other one is for the uh, handlebar switch unit. As I say, we'll go into these in detail, so we're only unboxing at the moment, but you'll notice that one of those orange ones has a male connector, and one of them has a female connector. So it is pretty easy to be able to see the difference between them. So that's the DVR unit. It's a much more sealed unit than certainly the old one on my old bike. And most importantly, it's got this little waterproof rubber cover here, covering over the micro SD card and the uh, uh, micro USB connector. So again, if I just show that to the camera, hopefully you'll be able to see the SD card, micro SD card slot and the micro USB. Now that used to be held on with three tiny little grub screws and taking out the SD card to do editing or whatever else you do, I was very fearful of losing those screws. Uh, Innov UK sent me some replacement screws, but of course, because I had the insurance of those, I never actually used any of the screws. Uh, but most importantly, as I say, it's a much more sealed unit now, and, and there is less involvement in connecting anything to the, to the DVR unit, which I think is, is a pretty major step forward. So that's the DVR unit. Obviously the cameras. So here is one camera. And here is the other camera. Um, this one does look to have less wire on it than this one, but we'll actually measure that when we get out. Other than that, they are totally identical. So these cameras are both 1080p cameras, and they will record through the DVR at 30 frames per second, or 60 frames per second if in the app you drop the resolution down to 720p. So, um, so good cameras aluminium good solid aluminium so again i've got no qualms about the quality on this whatsoever um it's been it's been very very good from my point of view so if we look at the camera connections the two main connections out of the dvr unit here are the two camera connectors and although both of them are male it means that you could connect either camera to either. But of course, you want to get some idea of which camera is which. So I'm pretty sure from the instructions that you'll see in a minute, that middle wire there is the front camera. So that's the one that you want to obviously connect, connect to the front. It isn't too much of a disaster because if you've connected that to the front and you connect it to the rear connector, which means all of the files will end in an R for rear, then all you've got to do is literally unscrew that, unscrew that, and swap them over. So anyway, that's the, that's the cameras and the camera mounts. Then we've got the GPS unit. So here is the GPS unit. It looks identical, but as you can see here, it's got an orange connector. So hopefully you can see that orange connector. And on this end, we've got a male connector. So again, Whilst you may think there's an awful lot of orange connectors, it can only go one way, and that is, without putting too fine a twist on it, male into female. So it can only possibly connect with that one as long as you realise that it's meant to be orange. So that's the GPS unit. And then we come on to the two new parts. So here we have an external microphone. It comes with a foam wind sock on it and a tie clip so that you can clip it somewhere when we get out to the bike we'll see where we want to position that but as i thought it's the red connector so the red connector will go to the only red connector you can't make a wrong decision here so that's the external microphone and then lastly we've got the handlebar mounted switch so just to look at this in detail it has the gps connector here it has the recording light here and the Wi-Fi light here and then the little button which you can hopefully hear um, that will freeze the file recording and then that one is the black connector and it's small and it's male so if we look at that that is the one that will go into the female on the other side of there so quite honestly you cannot make too much of an error 
with how you connect these up. So the only last connection that we've got to make then is the DC converter. So here is the DC converter. I think I'm just going to slide all of this aside for a moment so that we can see this clearly. Um, and then we can see that this has a red lead, goes to the red on your battery. It has a black lead, which goes to the black on your battery. And then it has a ready stripped yellow wire, which will go to the switched wire, which I'll be running actually from my uh, can smart unit but that should be connected to anything which is triggered by the ignition so lights indicators that type of thing anything you cannot switch on on the bike until you have the ignition switched on but we'll show you that a little bit later it has a fused live feed so inside here is a blade fuse like so and so so that's protecting the entire unit and then you can see that this has the other orange connector so if we just bring the DVR back into shot, you can see it's a female on this end. So it must be the male connector on the uh, actual DVR unit. So again, it's impossible to make it different. One other thing that I do like on this, which wasn't on my original one, is on the back side of the DC converter here, we now have a blue light. And that's good in as much as if you don't get any lighting from the unit itself, you can trace back to see if you've at least got power to the DC converter, the 5 volt DC converter, um, at, at that stage, if you like, before it moves through to the bike. So lastly in the box, and I won't open this in full because we'll do this more when we get out onto the bike, but there is a packet of mounting hardware. And let me tell you, I've never found a shortage of... Uh, mounting hardware even in the original boxes and this uh, mounting system has much more detailed blocks and boxes in it so consequently I'm pretty confident that we won't have any issues here.